Jose Vinales, Financial Counselor and Director of the Monetary and Capital Markets Department of the International Monetary Fund. What has happened to financial stability since the last Global Financial Stability Report? Over the last six months, what we have experienced is a, a setback in the progress towards global financial stability that has reversed some of the gains that we had made over the past three years. And this has been reflected in an overall increase of financial stability risks a, and a, a significant increase in the degree of global risk aversion. So what are the factors behind the setback? I think that this setback, which has led to a, a drop in, 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 in global confidence, um, is being motivated by three main factors. Weak growth, weak balance sheets of sovereigns and of the private sector, uh, households in the United States and some banks in the European Union, and also weak politics, because there's been a perception that politicians across both sides of the Atlantic may not have the willingness or the capacity to do whatever is needed to solve current problems. What do advanced economies need to do? I think advanced countries need to do two very important things. On the one hand, they have to address the issue of the public finances, which is the root of the sovereign risk, through credible medium-term strategies for the consolidation of the public finances. And this is absolutely essential. And this would also be very beneficial for the banking system in Europe because it would be perceived as being less risky than nowadays. And the second thing which is fundamental is to enhance the resilience of banks so that you can continue to provide credit for the economic recovery and cut the link between sovereign risk and banks. So turning now to emerging markets, these countries have been growing strongly but are still facing an increase in financial instability. What do they have to do? I think that emerging market economies need to take decisive policy action on the one hand to contain the domestic financial vulnerabilities in the form of excessive growth of credit, uh, excessively uh, high prices uh, of real estate and other assets and so on. So they need to take appropriate action to contain these vulnerabilities and at the same time they have to be prepared to withstand external shocks linked to a significant worsening of the world economic climate and the possibility of capital outflows which may make money leave these countries after having come in for a long time. And they need to do that through sound macroeconomic policies and sound financial policies. Mr. Vinas, thank you very much for this interview. My pleasure. Thanks to you.